What if we weren't the only humans left on Earth? What if Neanderthals, our closest extinct relatives, had survived the Ice Age and still walked among us today? Picture two intelligent species of humans sharing cities, competing in sports, voting in elections, even dating each other. This isn't science fiction. It's a scientifically grounded alternate reality. And the implications are more mind-blowing than you'd think. Who were the Neanderthals, really? Neanderthals evolved in Eurasia and adapted to harsh Ice Age environments for over 300,000 years. They were expert hunters, capable of bringing down massive Ice Age megafauna like mammoths and bison with spears and close-range tactics. Evidence from burial sites in Shanidar Cave suggests they may have cared for the sick and injured, showing compassion and social bonds. Some even used ochre pigments in decorated caves, hinting at symbolic thinking and possibly even spiritual beliefs. Their brains weren't just large, they had more volume in the visual and motor areas, suggesting strengths in hand-eye coordination and spatial reasoning. Unlike us, their bodies were compact and energy efficient in cold climates, with large nasal cavities that warmed air before it reached their lungs. They likely didn't speak like us, but researchers believe they had the FOXP2 gene linked to speech in modern humans, so a form of proto-language is likely. A parallel humanity. In this alternate timeline, cities wouldn't just be multicultural, they'd be multi-human. Neanderthals might form distinct neighborhoods with architecture adapted to their shorter, sturdier bodies, lower ceilings, wider doors, different ergonomics. Their culture may have emphasized utility and precision with music, tools, and rituals distinct from ours, but no less meaningful. They could have developed parallel educational systems tailored to their neurological strengths. Less abstract theory, more hands-on sensory-rich learning. Where Homo sapiens excel in metaphor and storytelling, Neanderthals might shine in environmental awareness, patience, and tactile skills. Imagine Neanderthal engineers building better bridges or soldiers trained in close combat tactics with a natural advantage in endurance and pain tolerance. Would they be equal or oppressed? In a world dominated by Homo sapiens norms, Neanderthals could easily become a marginalized class. Their physical appearance, brow ridges, wider noses, sloped foreheads, might lead to discrimination, mockery, or stereotyping as less intelligent. Yet such judgments would be rooted in bias, not fact. Their intelligence was simply wired differently. Would they be granted equal political rights? Access to education and health care? Or would we see species segregation? Neanderthals barred from certain jobs or even forced into separate living zones as seen in tragic moments of human history. On the flip side, some societies might celebrate diversity, incorporating Neanderthal heritage into their identity, creating hybrid art, festivals, and even shared mythologies. Technology, culture, and evolution. Two intelligent species in constant interaction could lead to explosive innovation or catastrophic tension. Imagine what two cognitive blueprints could create. Neanderthal tools refined by sapient tech or vice versa, blending brute strength and abstract logic. Cultural exchange might lead to fusion music, unique spiritual systems, or new philosophies rooted in sensory rather than verbal thought. We might even see interspecies relationships become normalized with hybrid offspring, neo-humans, emerging with mixed traits. This could shift the course of human evolution, 
less emphasis on verbal intelligence, more on spatial and physical cognition. And perhaps by combining our minds, we might have reached technological milestones, like renewable energy or space colonization centuries earlier. Though Neanderthals are gone, their story isn't. Today, up to 4% of DNA in many non-African humans comes from them affecting traits like skin tone, immune response, and even sleep patterns. They're in us, not just biologically, but metaphorically, a mirror to what we could have been, or still could be. This isn't just a what if about the past. It's a question about our future. If we struggle to accept diversity within our own species, how would we handle another? And if Neanderthals had survived, maybe we'd be more compassionate today. Not because they were so different, but because we learned how to live with difference.